And certainly Phil Steele here to his college football preview magazine is out the 2012 version. And the PhilSteele.com website is golden if you are a college football fan. Let's go west, young man. Let's go west and the Pac-12, which of course saw Colorado and Utah join that uh, conference a year ago. Let's first talk about the north where Oregon has been the dominant power in the Pac-12 here the last few years. Yeah, Oregon and Stanford have battled it out with uh, Andrew Luck, of course, the quarterback at uh, Stanford, and of course he's moved on. Uh, you look at Stanford, they're going to be a strong team this year, stronger than folks expect because the bulk of that big offensive line is back. They've got the tight ends. They've got the running game. And they just have a new quarterback, and losing Andrew Luck, the first player taken in the draft, is going to be tough to replace, but I, I like the, uh, the talent they have coming back there on offense and think they're going to be stronger than most folks expect. Now, defensively, when you look at Stanford this year, they get Skov back at uh, linebacker. And Skov was a player that got injured in the fourth game of the season last year, and that really took a little bit out of their defense. I think this is the best defense they've had at Stanford in the last couple of seasons, so I think Stanford could be one of those surprise teams. Now, when you look at the uh, North Division, I think Oregon State, uh, Washington, Washington State are all good stories. They're all bowl caliber teams. Washington State's got Mike Leach out there now, bringing his Texas Tech style of offense oh, there. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting, but none of those three teams, I think, are, are at the top. Uh, the top three teams, I feel, in the North. California, remember California played all of their home games last year away from home. They were at San Francisco uh, Giants Stadium because of the fact their stadium was under construction. They get to return home. They have a pretty good defense. They slowed down both Oregon and Stanford last year in their games. Uh, they're a good team, but I still want to put them quite up to the level of Oregon and Stanford. And while Stanford's good, I think the cream of the crop in the Pac-12 North is the Oregon Ducks. And, you know, Oregon last year defensively struggled a little bit. They gave up uh, 360, 370 yards per game, something like that. Uh, this year, they've got one of the better defenses they've had. Maybe the best defense since they had the gang green variety uh, probably about 10 years ago. It's, it's going to be a uh, hard-nosed defense. And they lose some key players on the offense. They lose Thomas at quarterback, LaMichael James at running back, and a, a couple of receivers. But I uh, like the replacements. In fact, they're two quarterbacks that they have coming in and battling for the job there at the quarterback spot, both faster than Darren Thomas. May, I bet maybe better fits for the offense. They've got speedsters at running back, including Barner and Thomas, and uh, they've got maybe their best receiving core they've had in three or four years. So add it all up. This Oregon team is one of the best teams in the country. I'd probably put them in the top five or six talent-wise in the country, but they do have to play, and circle your calendar, uh, November the 3rd, they have to play USC on the road. And it, there's two big games on November the 3rd. We'll talk about the other one when we get to the SEC, but that is a huge Titanic battle. Oregon at USC. USC last year was a, a large underdog, went into Oregon. Watson Stadium have pulled out the victory, and that's really the game that has vaulted USC to the, the front runner of everybody for number one this year. Now, uh, Oregon annihilated Stanford at Stanford last year, and then as you mentioned, uh, lost at home to Southern Cal as we go to the uh, South Division of the Pac-12. I said last season, uh, Phil, uh, Southern Cal may be the most underrated team in the nation. Obviously, they were not bowl eligible, but they're loaded this year under Kiffin. Yeah, I, you know, and I, I think if you look at USC and you look at their starting 11 on offense and their starting 11 on defense, probably the best starting units in the country. Uh, and, uh, you know, Lane Kiffin has done a phenomenal job. When when the suspensions hit that, that took away so many other scholarships the last three years, I thought USC might turn into a, a mediocre team. But Lane Kiffin's got them. Uh, I think USC is going to be the preseason number one team in the AP poll at the start of the year. They are that good, and their starting lineups are that good as well. So it's a tremendous rebuilding job by Lane Kiffin. Is UCLA finally going to show improvement? I believe they will. You know, they've got a new head coach in Jim Moore Jr. And you know, Rick Rick Neuheisel did a pretty good job uh, recruiting at UCLA. They, but the problem was they had so many injuries on the offensive line, injuries on the defensive line, injuries at quarterback. He couldn't keep a, a quarterback healthy to save his life. There were some years he was down to fifth string quarterback. So I think Jim Moore Jr. steps into a pretty good situation. He's got a talented team, one that's underachieved. They were actually the Pac-12 North champs last year. Remember, they were in a Pac-12 title game. They got rolled by Oregon and then lost right. the bowl game big and finished six and eight on a year. But uh, I think he's got a good enough team that uh, I don't believe he'll contend with USC. Nobody really in the North is going to contend with USC. But I do believe he's going to contend with Utah. And Utah is going you to like be... You like Utah, too. Yeah, Kyle Whittingham's doing a great job there. And, you know, last year, they get to the final game of the season. 
They're playing Colorado, and their kicker's having a phenomenal year. I believe their kicker had missed two kicks all year. He missed three kicks against Colorado. If just one of those kicks goes through the uprights, Utah's in the Pac-12 title game, and they probably would have given Oregon a better run for their money. And last year, the thing about Utah, they lost their starting quarterback about five games into the season, and they had signed a Juco over the summer, a kid that not a great arm, not overly big, not very fast, but he could play quarterback. And what happened was their running back, John White, turned into a star because they just turned around and handed it off to John White. They played great defense. They had the, uh, the, the best, one of the best defenses in the Pac-12. Their running back was a star, and their quarterback ended up throwing maybe 10, 15 passes a game down the stretch. Well, now they're in much better shape at quarterback. They've got Jordan Wynn back. They bring in three guys who are all ahead of last year's starter at the quarterback spot. So I think Whittingham's in a much better shape at quarterback. They've got John White back. They've got a pretty good defense, including their uh, defensive tackle, who is all Pac-12. In fact, he was the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year last year, Star Lotutelli, or I hope that's how it's pronounced. So Utah's going to be a good team, and watch out. they got to buy the week before they play USC, and that game's up in the altitude. And last year, the Utah-USC game went down to the stretch. Utah's kicking a field goal at the end of the game, which would have given them the win. They, and USC blocks it and returns it for a touchdown. You look at the final score, you see an eight or nine point difference, but it was really on that play at the end of the game. They played pretty good, and that was at USC. So I think that they, they are a contender in the Pac-12 in that respect, but I still think USC's head and shoulders above the rest. Now USC gets Notre Dame in their traditional every other year bet battle um, at home, and that's always uh, the last game of the season for uh, Southern Cal. Uh, but uh, outside of that, uh, if you see uh, that Oregon game is going to be huge, but do you see a rematch for the Pac-12 championship between Oregon and USC? And I, I think USC and Oregon, and, and we'll talk about this later when I talk about my national championship picks. Okay. One of those is going to have to beat the other one twice this year, because I think it's pretty much a set, a given. It's going to be Oregon Boy, and USC. USC for the Pac-12 title wow, game. and that uh, is tough. I think it's going to be a tremendous game because you have two top six teams yeah. going at it with great yeah, offenses and great on defenses. That field. Speed on both sides of the ball. I'm excited, but the thing that Pac-12 did, which would give them a shot at getting the national title game, is they have the Pac-12 championship at the home team or the home team of the team with the best record so if one of the teams in the pac-12 has a shot at going unbeaten let's say usc or oregon wins that first game they get the second game at home which means if they win that game at home in the second game then they get themselves in the national championship game so i thought that was very smart by the pac-12 to set that up giving the home field edge to the team that really has a shot to get another title game <laughs> when we return we will take a look at the sec Phil Steele's with us today.